thousand years, not just in Africa, but all over the damn planet, damn near. Because within us, we recognize and knew that that was not the way the male was made. And if you go into the old medical um, uh, books, which I study, the Gray's Anatomy, it's funny how Gray's Anatomy is no longer being referred to as the best book on anatomy. But I go back to the old shit. That's why I don't like the new dictionaries. Because there's words in there in the old dictionaries back in the 50s and 60s that have words that don't exist here today. So what I have done is I studied and found out that when a child is being formed inside of the mother's womb, you can tell it's going to be either male or female because one or two, one of two different ducks are being formed. When it's a male, coming off of the kidneys is something called the Wolfian duct. And yeah, it's Wolfian duct, I believe. If it's first, then take what I'm saying as reversed. Okay, the Wolfian duct, we'll say. Coming off of the kidneys and the forming of the, fe the, the fetus is something called the Wolfian duct. And in the book, it states that the Wolfian duct begins to develop into the penis. Mm -hmm. And as the child is developing, the penis is developing, you get right to the head. And as the child is developed, all of a sudden there's a spurt of growth that covers right over the, the head. And they say, well, why would it need to cover over the head? Mm -hmm. And they say, well, that's what is there. Nature did it, it's to protect it. I say, well, what if that's a pathological expression of nature? And the ancestors knew that and removed it. Because in the previous knowledge of the ancestors, they never had it before. Uh -huh. Now we go to the clitoris. And we say that the females who have a 10,000 year old secret society of women who still do it, <laughs> dealing with a the tradition, they say, well, they're butchering it. Yeah, well, back in the days, they didn't butcher it because just like the umbilical cord was tied off and dried up, the same thing happened to the clitoris back then. Because the women knew what to drink and they knew what to use on the clitoris to dry it up and atrophy the masculine principle within themselves. Hmm. So for the woman to become a woman, she had to atrophy that so that she could be the woman. For the man to be the man, he had to take off the female presence on him. Hmm. So when, those, when you begin to see it from the wisdom of the ancients, you begin to understand. Now, when the man goes back after he's done what he's done and he's grown older or he wants to become a priest, what does he do? He goes into his sanctuary or goes into the place where he is in his monastery and he puts on the habiliments of the monastery and then he replaces the previous with the hood. Mm, that's the reason for that. Okay. That's the expression because he's now asexual and he has both sexes that he represents, he's not supposed to be sexual. The hood represents the return of the prepuce over this head. You see, when, when we stop falling into the bullshit, whatever it is that white people are trying to tell us about ourselves, and we stop playing into that game that white folks got us believing is real, of course it's going to be butchering. Because if the sisters back then don't have the same cultural tools and cultural rituals and cultural knowledge that they did that they conducted that ritual for the females of course it's going to be butchery and it's not going to be the same anymore what is the same in our society anymore but if they're trying to continue the tradition it was for a reason and for them to be castigated after doing it for 10,000 years and you coming along with all your knowledge and science and saying well you shouldn't do that it's called female genital mutilation what the hell does that mean yeah, it's just another white woman's way of functioning and trying to take over. And most of the sisters, that's the one, right, and most of the sisters promoting uh, uh, against that tradition were educated in Europe. Of course. You see. Exactly, all of them. So, I, 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 as far as the situation with the sisters and the prepus and all that, I know what that was for, so I'm not condemning them because in their own genetic memory of their ancestors, they're following through with what they knew to be right at the time. Mm -hmm. Our genetics are perverted. Part of the expression of that perversion is the prepus and the clitoris. Now, they can come to me and try to come at me with what they know. I don't care. I can still destroy any theory they bring because I'm dealing from a metaphysical, metahistoric 
and metacultural perspective. They will never get behind what the culture is seeing in front. Not, they don't go behind why it happened. Some even the brothers and sisters in Africa don't even know why they still do it. They just know that they do it because their ancestors did it. Yeah. Exactly. Braiding their hair, doing the, what do you call it, putting it through their lip, putting it through their air. They know that this was for some reason, but the, it now becomes ornamentation or it just becomes medical now. You see, but it was for a scientific reason. We didn't do stupid things to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now, moving right along, if we want to deal with um, any questioning having to do with the DNA and consciousness, I'd be more than happy to speak on it. I have a few questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Am I surprised? No. <laughs> um, I I'll give you two. I have several, but mm -hmm. I'll give you two. Uh, DNA series. Um, if you can uh, kind of draw out how they determine what is a series, I don't know what you think. Well, again, I'm not versed in what they're speaking about as far as a series is concerned. And I'm sure that, what was his name again? Uh, Dr. Kidd, Kenneth Kidd. Right, you know who can actually give you good knowledge on that? I spoke with Ann Brown. Good. Very good. Now, what they...